Prostate cancer, it's a worry to many, many people all over the world and uh, difficult for doctors. PSA screening, according to research you're doing, it does more harm than good. Yes, it does. But because basically what you expect from a, a screening test is to reduce the mortality from prostate cancer. And already we have some doubt because there has been two major studies, one positive and the other absolutely flat. So already we don't really know what is going on. But even if we take the best, uh, the, the best assumption in favor of PSA screening, which are the results from the European ERSPC study, when we, we, you do the complete evaluation of arm and goods, starting from the beginning, the additional biopsy you need, the additional of a treatment, the additional prostate cancer, you will be diagnosed, and then all the side effects which are impotence, incontinence, etc. Then overall, you will have to create a very big amount of burden to prevent one death from prostate cancer. And this is under the best hypothesis, which is that screening works. But do you have a big amount of worry to contend with? Because many men and many doctors on behalf of their patients will worry that a patient could have aggressive disease. Yeah, but the thing is that uh, if, you, if you think at, at an individual level that you might have a worry to get an aggressive disease, first you have to make sure that uh, you're, you're not already an at-risk patient because uh, what you refer to is more about the question of uh, uh, selecting the patient of high risk group. For these ones, of course, you can use the PSA to follow them up and find if something goes wrong and you will have a good tool to identify if they are on the way to get a prostate cancer. The thing is that for the general population, what we've shown is that it's not really helpful and there is really no need to worry because if you start to do these tests, then your risk to have further side effect will be much more than the potential hypothetical benefit you will get. But PSA screening has been promoted to the general population, many of whom will assume they're at a risk of having high risk disease and won't necessarily know in all fact, these facts. In fact, PSA testing has not been promoted by major uh, health organization. It has been promoted essentially by urological association because they believe that it's a, a test worth doing it for following people. Uh, but uh, when you look when you look at the major uh, agency at the US Preventive Task Force or other major uh, health authorities, nobody really promoted the use of PSA for a mass screening uh, tool. But it's very uh, attractive to men to be screened in just the same way that women are screened for breast cancer. Yeah, it's, it's attractive because uh, it's simple. It's just on the usual blood sample you get for other tests. You just add the line on the prescription and then you will get your PSA test. So it's very attractive. But the thing is that nobody really realized that if you get a prostate cancer diagnosed with that, maybe it's an overdiagnosed cancer. Because that's what we've shown, is that sometimes it will be the case. So you will get unnecessary treatment, unnecessary suffering, psychological and physical suffering. But that's something nobody tells. So what is the prudent way forward? I think the prudent way forward is to first restrict the use of uh, PSA tests for the high-risk populations, population with a family history and other high-risk population who are already followed for by urologists. Uh, for other men, as I would say that uh, for the moment there is no real test already existing to uh, to to. to to really do a proper screening at the at the present time, and uh, so that's and unfortunately uh, th that was a very good dream to have a, a tool where you can uh, have every man uh, being diagnosed and to reduce their risk of prostate cancer, but it doesn't really exist at the present time. Mm. So what what would you say to practicing doctors at this point, many of whom are quite used to using PSA? I would tell them that they will have to uh, first. Uh, look at what would be the potential burden, what, what harm they could create to their patient and discuss with their, uh, their patient whether or not they are ready to take the risk. Because uh, if you start to, to tell the people that it's not just putting a line on the prescription and not just having a, a number, but that it will conduct to biopsy, some of these biopsy could conduct to, uh, to hospitalization because of severe adverse events. Some it's rare, but some might die of it. 
you could have an overdiagnosed prostate cancer and you could die of radical prostatectomy. So if you start to tell the people that to gain potentially, and we are not sure that it's true, because we have conflicting results from the trial, to gain potentially one or two years of life at the, at the age of 70 or 80, you have the risk at the age of 50 to already lose some quality of life and even lose some year of life if you are unlucky and die from, from the side effects of the diagnosis and treatment. So what is the briefest bottom line message that people should take home from this? I would say that they should reduce uh, drastically the current use of PSA testing in general population. And if you look, for example, at the French uh, situation uh, right now, what we've, sh what we've shown is that for a man age 65 years of age, 80% of them receive a PSA test during a period of three years. So it's really already something ongoing, very active, but I would suggest to the GPs to really, redu really reduce their usage of PSA testing. Thank you very much.